What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome into the Mariners post game recap. Mariners had a chance to win a series today. Would have been their first series win of the year. They do not do it. They fall on their faces and drop this one 12 to 4 to the Milwaukee Brewers. Mariners are now 4 and 6 on the season. I'm going to break it all down for you guys. Before I do, I am 70 subs away from 3,000. Would love to try and get there, maybe by tomorrow if it is possible. Thank you guys so much for the support. So if you're new here, hit that sub button. Hit the like button for me as well. It helps out the channel. And don't forget to use my promo code JS Trident for $20 off your next purchase on SeatGeek. I apologize for this post-game recap being up so late. wonder if some of you were thinking, did, did we do it? Is Jay done? Was it 10 games it took for him to just be done with this baseball team? Uh, there's been some seasons where I've probably through 10 games been like, done, you can't do this anymore. But uh, no, I will be here for all 162, I promise you guys. Even if they're 32 and 80, um, I'll still talk about the games. We may have to move into more you know, minor league type stuff at that point, but uh, I will still be here for you guys um, all season long. Not just post-game recaps, we'll have other stuff up as well. And tomorrow morning, I'll have a series preview up um, for the Blue Jays series coming up as well. Sundays are just, Sundays are for family for me. So it's just, you know, we're out and about doing things. So it's sometimes hard to get these post-game recaps up um, until later in the evening. But the Mayors dropped this one 12 to four, fall to four and six on the year. And, and listen, I know I'm sounding like a broken record to you guys. I think this is just you know, if I did monthly recaps of the team, you'd probably hear a lot of different stuff because so much can happen. But when it's game by game, you know, it's never like one individual game that just sets you over the top for a team being bad or a team being good, right? It's it's a collection. And, you know, if, like I said, I'm going to sound like a broken record here. No, I, I'm not giving up. I think I still think this is a good baseball team. I still think they'll be fine. I think they've played very, very poorly through 10 games. Um, in fact, I would say they, again, I think they're lucky to be four and six. I think their run differential, truthfully, they have a worse run differential than the Oakland athletics right now. Now we shouldn't be looking at run differential through 10 games. That's not exactly the, the way those numbers are supposed to be. It's got to be over the course of the long haul, but this team has been bad. I mean, they, they could easily, easily be two and eight right now. And like, by the way, they've played, um, I think they've played one game, one or two games where I felt like, wow, that was a good effort. Last night, for the most part, I thought was a really complete game, or at least as complete as they've played. Um, the first Cleveland game was pretty solid, top to bottom. And then, I mean, you know, the one nothing game against Boston, but the offense didn't do anything. But it was a great start by George Kirby, and Logan Gilbert pitched well uh, the next night as well. But other than that, not much good. In fact, you know, we'll talk about Emerson Hancock here in a minute. This time through the rotation, besides Bryce Miller, was awful. The offense, again, a little bit better, and they scored 14 runs in this series. They were certainly they, they were certainly better than they were in the first couple series, and even though today they kind of let Colin Ray settle in and, and take care of them, but they also got in such a big hole early that it, it's hard to play offense in games like that. Like, you get down 8-2 after four innings, and, you know, it, it's just tough to battle back from getting – getting down that bad. I'm not going to praise the offense yet. There's still a lot of frustration and some bad performances, but this to me was more on the pitching today. The defense too, you know, I haven't talked about that. The defense has been bad. Um, and, and listen, you can get away with bad defense. I think when you've got Logan and Kirby and uh, Castillo on their game, I think you can get away with some poor defensive performances. And I haven't checked the metrics yet to see where they are defensively. Again, I, I once we're a month in, I'll start pulling up WRC plus outside of maybe just a you know I'll do it quickly, but to really analyze it, some of the defensive metrics. Until then, this is still very small samples we're dealing with, but every game becomes a little bit more of a sample. So again, if you're completely frustrated, I get it. I am not telling you when I say I still believe in this team. I'm not saying that you're wrong if you're. I'm frustrated too. You know what I'm trying to get out here. I am absolutely frustrated. Um, I think it was key for this team to get off to a hot start. And they still can. We are still so early in the year that, you know, they're a sweep away from being seven and six. And I think we'd all be fine with that. Now you might be looking at me going, Jay, do you think they're going to sweep Toronto after the way they've played? No, they don't look like a team that's on the verge of a sweep, but baseball's weird. Like things change on a dime. I've seen teams lose 13, nothing, then lose three and win three in a row after that. Like baseball is very weird. You have Castillo, Kirby and Gilbert on the hill in that series. 
you know, I'm not saying I'm predicting a sweep, but like it is absolutely possible that they could go into Toronto and come out of there seven and six. So like I said, they could still get off to a hot start, but as each game goes by, that becomes less and less likely. And we've seen this team just get off to cold starts. I don't know if that's something inherent that Scott's not doing right. Um, or if it's a player thing, you know, or hitting coach pitching. I don't know what it is. Um, but this team just seems to get off to cold starts. It could just be random. It could just be a fluky thing that they just haven't played great ball in April. Um, I will say Cleveland, Boston, Milwaukee are all playing pretty good baseball. And I certainly don't think that they're awful teams by any means. Um, but they are teams that I would, I would hope the Mariners could, you know, win six of those games, even five and five. I probably, had they found a way to win today. I probably would have been like, listen, not the greatest start in the world, but they're five and five. We're wiping the slate clean. You got the big three going the next three games. Let's dive back in and get this season back on track. And again, that, that can still happen. Four and six, five and five is not a big difference, but it just feels a lot worse, especially when you're this, this early in the year. And like I said, they are playing truthfully. Like, like I said, I think they've played like a two and eight team. So I mean, you can look at that as a positive or a negative. Um, you can look as a positive in the fact that like, Hey, they've played worse and they're actually a little bit better maybe than what they should be. You can look as a negative and be like, they're lucky to be four and six. They could easily go to and eight over the next 10 if they keep playing like this. So um, my take on is this, you know, my final, after going through that whole rant there, we're still really early in the year. I mean, be, we're beyond really early in the year. This is 10 games. The Mariners are going to play four and six over a 10 game stretch at some point. It's also, while I don't think these are the greatest teams they've played, this wasn't 10 games against Oakland either. Um, now I will say too, the schedule doesn't get easier. We've got Toronto, then the Cubs. Those are decent baseball teams. I know Toronto is kind of similar to the Mariners. They're frustrated with ownership. They didn't have the, I mean, I know Toronto fans are kind of frustrated by some of the things with the teams kind of like Mariners fans, I think a little bit, um, but still a decent baseball team. that has got some great pitching. So as much as I think Seattle can go in their big three and do damage, Toronto could easily take two out of three. And then you've got a pretty good Cubs team coming into town. So, you know, it's not like you've got three against Oakland, three against the White Sox, and then, you know, three against the Angels with Mike Trout being out or something like that. Like this is, or three against who's another, the Nationals or something like that. Even though the Nationals took two out of three from the Mariners last year. But you, you guys know what I'm getting at there. Um, it's going to be tough. Like, and, and as much as I don't think this start, and I'm sorry for ranting here, guys. I don't, I'm, I'm really just kind of rambling. And that's why I do these. This is, you know, kind of like it's Mariners therapy, diary, whatever you want to call it. But I absolutely think they can bounce back from this. But you have put yourself in a position, they go in Toronto and get swept. You come out four or nine. You know, is it still plenty of time to bounce back? Of course, but you're starting to dig yourself a hole. And that's what they've done here. Four and six is not the end of the world by any means. They were going to play four and six over a 10 game stretch at some point. But you've put yourself in position now where another four and six or another two and five stretch, and you're looking at five, six games under 500. And now you do have to bat a little bit. There's plenty of time to do it, but you're putting just a lot of pressure on yourself. Um, and the players are going to start putting pressure on themselves. And that's when it can just, you know, go downhill and listen, you've got a GM that's last year of his contract, a manager, like it can get ugly. And I'm not saying that to be doom and gloom. I am still optimistic about this team. I had them winning 90 to 92 games. And I said they would win the AL West. I still think they will do that. I think this team probably going to be a little streaky at times, but I think they get going. They are going to be really, really good. Doesn't mean I don't have question marks. Doesn't mean I'm just blindly going. It's fine. I have some criticisms. But again, I'm not going to let 10 out of 162 change my thoughts. So, and again, if I was doing monthly recaps, you'd kind of see like a little maybe change in tone, but doing, you know, nightly post games, you know, it's going to be a lot of the same unless it just really, really gets out of hand. So let's break down this game. I hope that rant made some sense. Um, dear diary kind of situation for me there. Emerson Hancock was bad. <laughs> Three and a third, 11 hits, eight runs, eight earned, one walk, six Ks, gave up two home runs. He was hit hard. The six strikeouts is nice after only striking out one against Cleveland. Um, so good to see that a little bit. There was some stuff in the early innings where I thought he was a little bit unlucky. There was an infield hit um, by Oliver Dunn, then he steals second. I think an, another kind of just base hit gets through the side. Um, it was one-to-one -one with runners at second and third. 
or first and third with two outs. There should have been a strike three call by the home plate umpire that was called a ball. And it just kind of spiraled from there. But then after that, then they started hitting Hancock really hard. Um, and they started giving the home runs and the hard contact. So Emerson Hancock, I did not think was good. I, you know, I want Brian Wu back. I'm a big fan of Brian Wu. He's the fifth starter for a reason. Um, I said, I think Emerson Hancock can hold down the fort. Okay. For a handful of starts, but today was not okay. That was not holding down the fort at all. What he did against Cleveland was holding down the fort. Now I said in that post game recap, as a fifth starter, I gave that start an A, right? If you can get five and a third, two earned runs from your number five, who cares how it happens? Now, I did say I didn't think Hancock looked that great in the first start. It was just results-based analysis. It was fine. But today, you know, the strikeouts were okay. The, no, only the one walk, but he got hit hard. So I have not been, truthfully, and I've said it before, I was not overly impressed with Emerson Hancock last year when he was up, and I haven't been impressed much this year either. It's not to say he won't develop into a good pitcher, but he looks like a guy that it looks like a maybe a back end guy. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily see flashes of a top line pitcher. He doesn't have to be, um, but truthfully, what you saw today is not even serviceable for a major league pitcher. You, you just can't have outings like that. And you know, we might say, well, George Kirby had an outing like that. George Kirby's an established guy. Like Kirby is going to bounce back. Emerson Hancock is not yet, and he may get to there. Um, but this team absolutely needs Brian Wu back. Dallas Keuchel pitched today. I think he threw five shutdowns in Tacoma. Listen, I'm not going to stand on a soapbox for Dallas Keuchel. He hasn't been good in three, four years. But if he can do a Tommy Malone for you, I, I always bring up Tommy. I feel like Tommy Malone gets referenced in my videos more than anybody else. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of fun because I always joked he was on retainer for the Mariners. But, you know, if Keuchel can come in, give you five innings, two runs, you know, three walks. I don't care if he strikes out anybody, whatever, you know. Give me the Marco Gonzalez, you know, one run through five innings. I don't care how it's done. With Kirby Castillo and Gilbert, I do. They're they're the top line guys. I want to see them get good results with good process. I could care less what Dallas Keuchel's process is, just get out. So I do wonder if maybe, maybe we do see it. Um, they'll probably give Hancock another shot at it. I haven't heard any updates on Brian Wu. Hopefully we'll get some maybe this week. Um, I think it'd be great to get Brian Wu back in there. Um, you know, if you're not a huge fan of him and Wu has had trouble with lefties and everything, I do think you're going to get better performance than he did out of Emerson Hancock. Uh, hope Colin Snyder's okay. Um, he got, I believe, hit by the comeback, or I did have to step out for that one, but he ends up giving up two earned runs because he gave up the two hits, had to come out. Nice job by Taylor Saucedo. Scott praised him in the post game, and he deserved it. Uh, went two and two-thirds, which is probably one of his longest outings of his career. One walk and four strikeouts. That was good to see because I have not been super impressed with Saucedo so far. The results haven't been terrible, but the stuff has just looked flat. Good to see him get the strikeouts going. Um, Trent Thornton, a shutout inning, and then our ace, Josh Rojas, gives up two runs and a walk in his one inning. You know it's bad 10 games in when a, a position player has already made two pitching appearances. <laughs> not a great thing. Probably going to have to make a roster move tomorrow. Um, might have to with Colin Snyder being hurt. Um, Saucedo throws two and two-thirds, so he's probably not available. Um, you know, you should have Munoz, Stanek, everybody good to go. If there was an off day tomorrow and Snyder's okay, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But with a game tomorrow, I do wonder if we see um, some kind of roster move that goes down, especially if Snyder is legitimately hurt. I didn't get a chance to check the post game, so maybe there was some news on it. Um, but yeah, I would expect a bullpen move to be made. And then Ty France will be back as well. I would expect Samad Taylor to go down. Um, back to Tacoma. I did float on Twitter that maybe you option Luke Rayleigh or Dom Canzone just because neither are getting really consistent playing time, especially with Ty being back in there tomorrow. And Taylor gives you another kind of right-handed bat with some speed and versatility to have off the bench. But I don't think they're sending Rayleigh down and Canzone had a nice game today. So I just don't think you can send Canzone down after this game either. So I'd imagine some odd Taylor goes down and none of that, like optioning Rayleigh or Canzone is, and I don't mean that negatively towards them, but just to get them consistent at bats. I, I don't know. And Mitch Hanniger has been hitting the ball. Well, um, you know, he had a day off today, which is fine. I, I would like to see more days off for Mitch Hanniger to help keep him healthy. So there's, hasn't been a ton of playing time for both guys. Rayleigh and Canzone is what I was trying to get at there. 
Taylor Saucedo, clearly the MVP of the pitching today, um, no doubt. N nice job by him. Probably did save the bullpen a ton and is going to allow them probably just make one roster move as opposed to two. You know, so nice job by Sauce. In fact, I, you could even maybe see they could send Sauce down. I hate that, but he's probably unavailable now for a couple of days going two and two thirds. And I hate when guys do that. They ball out for you. They take kind of take one on the chin a little bit. Not he didn't take it on the chin, but gave him those innings. And then it's like, oh, well, now you're going down because we can't use you for two days. So hope Sauce sticks on the team. Um, not to be worried, he'd be back at some point this year, but I, I just hate when that happens. Like it's it's part of it's part of the business, part of the game. But I think when guys do that for you, it's like they should be kind of rewarded to stay up. I don't know. That's just me. Let's look at the offense, which, again, I did think had some better at-bats early on. First couple innings, they looked really good. Um, they are hitting the ball better. It's still not good enough. We still haven't had, like, an offensive explosion game or anything like that. Um, but they but they are putting better at-bats together. Certainly better than the first homestand. So that is encouraging if we're looking for some silver linings. Uh, JP was 0 for 4, really tough start for JP. And, and listen, at the end of the day, we want to talk about why this team has struggled. Two things, and I'll get to in a second. Let me get, well, I'll talk about it now. One, the last time through the rotation, everybody was bad except Bryce Miller. Hancock was bad, Kirby was bad, Gilbert's bad, Castillo was bad. No shock, they lost four of those games, won one of them. Take away that one and four, and you're looking at a team that's, guess what, three and two. So the starting pitching, not good this time around. Not worried about it. Maybe Hancock a little bit. Not worried about the other guys. But again, we're talking about 10 games, and that has made a huge impact on the 10 games. And then the top of the order isn't hitting. JP is not hitting. Julio, better today. Another hit. Good game yesterday. A couple hits. But Julio is OPSing 493. Um, you know, Jorge Polanco, better today. Home run yesterday. But he's OPSing 507. Cal wasn't in the lineup today, but he's OPSing in the fours. Luke Rayleigh's OPSing 350. I won't get too much on the bottom of the lineup, guys, just because they're not your studs. But guys, it doesn't matter. If JP Crawford, Julio Rodriguez, and Jorge Polanco, who, excuse me, do not pick it up and play better, this season has no shot. Like it doesn't matter about anything else. I don't care what Sebi Zavala does, and we'll talk about him a little bit. I do not care. If those guys aren't hitting, you can kiss the season goodbye. I think they will hit. They are too good of players to not be hitting. But so far through the 10 games, that's probably one of the biggest reasons. Your rotation was awful second time through, and your best players are not barreling up the ball like they need to. Um, once that figured, once that gets figured out, I think this team will be fine. Um, Julio was one for four, excuse me, one for three. Smod Taylor pinched hit later. He was 0 for 1. Uh, Polanco was one for four, that RBI single in the first inning. Mitch Garver was one for four. Darius came in for him, and um, I think I don't think he got that bad. I don't remember. Doesn't look like he did. Luke Rayleigh was 0 for 4. Dylan Moore was 1 for 4. Nice start to this year for Dylan Moore. Him and Josh Rojas have been two of the bright spots. I, I've said it countless times, but really good that Dylan Moore has been healthy um, from the get-go and has put together some real nice at-bats. I know 1 for 4 isn't amazing or anything like that. Um, it was a double, but you know it, it, Dylan Moore has been swinging a good bat. Thank goodness. Josh Rojas. Two for three with an RBI and a walk on base three times. I, I know the defense of him and Urias at third has not been spectacular so far. Ross was really good at second base last year. I will say that. So hopefully he can get it together at third. I mean, you know, we'll see if they, I guess you could move Polanco there if it really becomes an issue. Um, but so far, Rojas and Urias, their bats have been all right. Um, you know, their production has been fine offensively. It's the defense I'm a little bit more you know, don't know about, but a nice game today for Rojas. And he pitched an inning too. Um, Dom Canzone, two for four with a two-run home run. Good to see, starting to improve his offensive numbers a bit. Again, with Canzone, you can see it. You can see a good hitter in there. Um, it's just got to be laying off those breaking balls a little bit better, um, you know, controlling that zone a little bit more as he's at the plate. But the power is legit. The bat is legit. Um you know, I, I think we see that Dom Canzone can be a good hitter. It's just about consistency. Sebi Zavala 0 for 4. <sighs> Listen, it's kind of – so Zavala started three games so far. And a defensive catcher, you know, supposed to be a good defensive catcher, good game caller. He's caught Bryce Miller's first start where he struggled. Um, he caught George Kirby's second start where he got lit up. And he caught Emerson Hancock today and he got lit up. Listen, that's a small sample. I'm not going to stand here and say, well, 
Emerson Hancock would have thrown seven shutout innings if not for Sebi Zavala. It's very likely not his fault at all. It's just a random occurrence, right? Like catchers can call great games. If pitcher stuff is flat and getting hit, you know, there, there's nothing that they can do on that for, for the most part. You know, it, it's sort of, you know, I can't, it's the offensive line. The offensive line isn't going to block, you know, the running back can't find the holes. I, I don't know, man. It's not the best analogy, but, um, but it is just kind of like, okay, Zaval was brought in to a couple things, give some stability to the position because Tom Murphy, great bat, but couldn't stay healthy. Um, which, and I wish they would have brought Tom Murphy back. That was honestly, of all the things that I didn't like the Geno trade, I was fine with trading Kellenic, didn't like it was in a salary dump, just in case anyone wants to know my thoughts on that. Um, but not bringing back Tom Murphy. And I get, I, I get like the injury stuff is frustrating, right? I, I said last year, I think a healthy Tom Murphy in September probably helps get this team in the playoffs. It was huge that they, he missed that month for them. But man, so far Zavala, I mean, his at-bats, he had one in the third inning. It was six to two runners at the corners. And listen, you're never guaranteed to get a hit, but if you can find a way there, get a base hit, turn it back over to JP, maybe you rally a little bit. You make this game 6-3. Then there's runners at the corners again for JP. You know, tying runs at the plate. Ray's under a little bit of pressure. Maybe you do get back in this game. Zavala's not had good plate appearances. And I I actually thought some of the throws, the second, the one in the first inning were done with safe. I actually thought it was a good throw. Um, so I, I don't doubt that Zaval is a good framer, good good at throwing runners out, and, and a good good at calling games. Although, like again, it hasn't shown yet. I'm going to chalk that up to it's just kind of random. You know, even the best catchers can't you can't make Emerson Hancock amazing if he just doesn't have the stuff. But backup catcher looks like a hole, and they want to give Cal Raleigh more days off, which I 100% support, especially in April, because you want Cal you know ready to go down the stretch, but. Again, the problem with losses building up, they're going to have to rely on Cal now to, you know, and Cal's been struggling too. You know, I shouldn't jump on Zavala and not criticize Cal, but, um, you know, you don't want to get in a position now where you're chasing wins and you're wearing some of these guys out. Now, listen, they've struggled, like, you know, too bad, step up and play, but, you know, it, it's just all kind of, it's just everything that adds up to the frustration a little bit so far. So, you know, not a great game for Zavala either. Have not been overly impressed. Um, listen, if you want me to assess the 10 games, I'm not impressed at all. This looks like a bad baseball team. But uh, we have more data than just this team has played 10 games. You know what I mean? We know that J.P. Crawford, Julio Rodriguez, Jorge Polanco, Cal Raleigh, Mitch Garver are good baseball hitters. And even if you don't like those guys, they're all better than what they've done so far. Even if you thought there was going to be some regression, this isn't regression. This is just straight up OPSing what I would OPS. I'd OPS zero for the record, but you know what I mean, right? Like this is not regression. This is just awful, awful play. Um, they will be better. Those guys will be better. Um, the pitching, you're not going to get awful starts four to five from these guys. They are going to pitch better. Hopefully it starts tomorrow with Luis Castillo because they need him to be better than he was the first two starts. Um we can jump on Scott. Like I said, I got on Scott yesterday, but players have to play. And I know some people are going to look and go, do we think about making a managerial change? And then it may happen, right? Like I'm not trying to be doom and gloom here. I'm just, we're just talking, right? I'm not going all in here. There's a long way to go before that. Managers are sometimes the guy that takes the fall, but I can tell you like the, the players got to play. These guys have to be better. Um, now, ultimately it falls on Jerry, Justin and Scott. They've constructed the roster, and if it doesn't work, then they need to be held responsible, regardless of what any projections say, regardless of what a Pythagorean win-loss says. If the win-losses aren't there, those people have to be held accountable um, for sure. But in this instance right now, you know it doesn't matter. You need these guys playing better baseball. Julio's got to be better. JP's got to be better. They will. They will. It's 10 games. It, it, it is a very, very small blip on the radar. If this team started out nine and five and went four and six, we probably wouldn't bat an eye at it, but it's all the data we have big picture. I think they're going to be fine. Still small picture. They are lucky to be four and six. That's, that's really what I've got for you guys. I will have the blue Jay series preview probably up tomorrow morning. I want you guys to have a great night. Enjoy the little bit that's left of your weekend. Um, you know, it's, it, it was rough chance to win a series and they couldn't do it. Hopefully they can get it going in Toronto. They're not buried at all they can find a way to get two out of three they're right back in this thing come home win another two out of three and you're 500 or above and you've still got 145 games left 
not panic time by any means, but it's not fun watching bad baseball either. So have a great night, everybody. Go Mariners. Remember to hit that like button. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Members only live stream tomorrow night, guys. Think about becoming a channel member, $4.99. We're going to have a contest giveaway. It'll be in the members only community section. And it's a great chance for one-on-one. So if you guys want to just kind of hang with me, talk, um, you know, you can ask questions, we can hang out. It, it, it's a fun time. Um, like I said, it's a little more personal when it's a member's stream. I can get to more questions and stuff like that versus a, a huge stream with everybody where it can be a little bit tougher. Uh, but no worries. We are having a regular live stream next Friday um, on my channel as well for the game against the Cubs. So we haven't gotten the live streams yet this year. So don't give up on the season yet, guys. Have a great night. Go Mariners. Peace.